Good Monday morning. I'm Otis Corbett. I'm coming to you on Facebook this morning so that we can all start off this week the right way with Scripture and prayer. Our passages for today are Jonah 3, verses 1 through 5, and Mark 1, verses 14 through 20. Let's begin by reading from Jonah 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even unto the least of them. Now, let's continue by reading from Mark chapter 1. Now, after that, John was put into prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net unto the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who were also in the ship, mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. When I was in school, I never liked those assignments that involved crossword puzzles or those seek and find puzzles. And that's probably because I was not very good at them. And I'm still not very good at them today. But one type of puzzle that I was good at was that type when you were presented two pictures and you had to spot the differences between the two. I still like those puzzles when I see them on social media. Now, our passages for today are something like that. Uh, they're the same sermon, but they're different. These passages are the same because they both involve short and succinct sermons. <laughs> a common saying in Baptist life is that there is no such thing as a bad short sermon. Um, and that might be a commentary on many Baptist preachers more than anything else. But uh, that saying is there's no such thing as a bad short sermon, and these were really short. So by definition, they must have been really good. These sermons are the same because they both call upon people to repent. Repentance is a decision of the will to cease turning our backs toward God, but instead turn our faces back towards God. Repentance alone does not save us, but until we repent, we cannot accept God's salvation, which He enacts in our lives. These sermons are the same because of the response of the people also. In Jonah, the entire population of Nineveh, including the king, repented and sought God's forgiveness. In Mark, the disciples answered the call of Jesus to follow Him. Like, like Abraham, they followed Him literally dropping their nets, and going after Jesus. They responded the same way Abraham did in Genesis 12. Now, in both these passages, the sermons were effective, their invitations were clear, and those who heard responded enthusiastically. Yes, these sermons were the same, but they were also different. As Jonah preached a across Nineveh, his message was one of judgment. The people of that great city were doomed if they did not repent and turn to God. The message that Jesus preached was one of enlistment, inviting God's people to become involved in His saving work. These sermons were also different because their audiences were different. Jonah was a foreign missionary. He was taking the Word of God to a people who probably, most likely, had never heard it before. Jesus instead was bringing his message to people who had heard it and who knew it. He was telling them that the time that they had been waiting for had come. 
These sermons were also different because Jonah and Jesus themselves were different. Jonah was a messenger. He was the moon reflecting the sun. Jesus is the sun. Not only is he, is he the sun with an O, he's the sun, the light of the world. Jonah could not save, but Jesus can, and he does still save. So like those school puzzles I mentioned above, these sermons are different, but they're the same. And they're the same, but they're different. They are two sides to the same coin, and their message still applies today. Now, some people sell God short by saying that because God is love, He has no ethical or spiritual standards. Nothing could be further from the truth. God is perfect, and He cannot abide in perfection. He hates our sin, and He cannot allow us in His realm until our sin is purged. Some people also sell God short by saying that because He's perfect, He has no love. Nothing could be further from the truth. God is love, and He has created a means to purge our sins through the saving work of Jesus Christ. He sacrificed His uniquely begotten Son to allow us to enter into His realm after we repent and turn to Him. The coin of the realm in God's kingdom has two sides. It has the fact of judgment and the face of salvation. And we must accept both to become subjects of God and workers in His kingdom. Now, let's turn to a time of prayer. Let's begin with some requests from our local ministry. Each week we pray for a different church. So this week pray for Buck Creek Baptist Church and Pastor Tyler Ingram. Thank you for praying for our churches last year, and please continue to pray for them this year, especially those without pastors. I'm very burdened for our churches without pastors, and I pray you'll come alongside me and help me seek God for them, that they will find their shepherd. Also, we want to pray for uh, the prayer rallies that are being uh, planned in Covenant Baptist Association. Our first one is January 30th at Westview Baptist Church, and we want everyone in that area or across the county to come join us in a time of prayer, focusing on prayer. One thing we'll be praying for is our United Youth Conference. That's coming Febu in February. Pray for our speaker, Recap, Bray, uh, Recap Gray, excuse me, and for our worship band, Russia Fools. Uh, pray for our youth pastors as they are even now uh, sorting out the last minute details. This is a wonderful event every year, and we pray that many youth would be, and their parents and their youth workers would be uh, impacted positively for the gospel. May they hear the message of uh, that we talked about, that two-sided message of judgment and love, of, uh, of needing to change and the ability to change through Jesus. Now, on a broader scale, we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine and for peace in Jerusalem and in the Middle East as well. We should probably add the, the tensions in the Pacific area as well. I saw recently where the United Kingdom's defense minister says that we're in a pre-combat phase or a pre-conflict phase or a pre-war phase in international affairs. I, I pray that's not true. But uh, in any case, we know there will always be wars and rumors of wars, and we need to pray that people will find the peace of Jesus as well as the peace in Ukraine and Jerusalem. As we are individually saved, then we can change the world. Same in terms of our cultural and political unrest in our own land. Pray that we can reduce that uh, through following Christ, but also pray that cooler heads and righteous hearts will prevail in all these debates. Pray for those who are sick from COVID, flu, and RSV. Pray for the healthcare workers who are treating them daily. And let me just pray for you. I want you to have a good week, and I want you to feel God's blessings every day. Let's pray. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make His face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. I hope you all have a good Monday morning and a great week to come, and I hope to see you again here next week.